Hello and welcome to this week's video tutorial where I'm going to show you how to stitch together a number of photographs to create a seamless panorama. The first thing you need to do is go ahead and shoot the scene of your choice with a digital camera and to give you an example of what I mean I want you to check out these images I have open inside Photoshop Elements and as you can see all three are taken from the same vantage point but I've taken the first image and then I've moved the camera to the right and taken another one and then I've moved it even further to the right and taken a third one and you can do that as many times as you like because Elements is able to stitch together more than three photos at a time in fact you can even move the camera up and down to create an entire scene the image that I have on screen by the way was taken a few months ago at Wembley Stadium in London during the England-Mexico game when we all thought we were going to win the World Cup. That didn't quite turn out as planned but hopefully this panorama effect is going to work out exactly as we've planned. And also I should say if you haven't got any of your own images to try then you can go ahead and download these exact photographs from the free Photoshop Dot com website. All you need to do is be a member and you can download anything you like. Okay, so how are we going to turn these three separate images into one smooth looking panorama? Well, I'm going to come up here to the file menu and then I'm going to select this new option right at the top and notice we get five different photo merge options. Well, the one we want to select is going to be the photo merge panorama option just like so. That's going to bring up the photo merge dialog box which I have to say is very simple and almost completely automated which doesn't always mean we're going to end up with getting great results but we're going to go ahead and give it a try nonetheless. Now I usually work left to right but I'm gonna deal with the source files section of this dialog box before the layout because we need some files before we choose what we're going to do with them, if that makes sense. Now, if we hadn't already opened our files, we could use this browse button to search the computer for the images we want. We've already got our images open, however, so I'll go ahead and click the add open files button. And those images will appear to populate into the source section, just like so. If we're dealing with a lot of files, it's worth knowing that we can change this use option to folders and as a consequence import all the images in a given folder. Great help if you're working with lots of images at the same time. Okay, so let's see what this layout option is here for. And as you can see, we have a choice of five layouts. Well, technically it's four with an added auto option. If you know what you're doing, then go ahead and click whichever one you believe you need. If you're not too sure, then click on auto. That's my general rule of thumb. What these various options do, as you can see in their little previews beneath each one, is control how the image is laid out to form the panorama. So most of the time, if you simply line these images up on a table or something like that, the perspective is going to cause problems with the whole image looking credible. So to counter that, Elements is going to work out how it needs to twist and turn each image to make it look right. As I said before, my advice is to hit the auto button at first and then if things don't work out, you can go ahead and come back and try out some of these different layout options and run the merge again. All right, I've selected the auto option and I've also got our images listed here. Now to go ahead and merge the files, click the OK command just like so. And Elements is going to set about forming a seamless panorama with the images you've given it and the options you've chosen. And I must add that in the last few versions of Photoshop Elements, Adobe have completely redesigned the way this merging works. It now uses some really advanced scripting and some great aligning and merging technologies to get the job done. And speaking of getting the job done, here we are with our final image. I'll make this a little larger so it fits the screen properly and I'll zoom to make sure we're seeing all of this image as good as we possibly can on the relatively small recording environment and that looks really great. The only thing is the aligning that we use to make the shot look good 
has left us with a rather odd shaped image. So to fix that we're going to crop it. But before I do I want to take your attention to the layers panel for a second. So I'll make sure all these images are out of the way. I'll just move them over to the left a little. In fact I'm just going to close those free source files down now. We don't need them anymore because we've already done all of our work by getting them copied into the panorama. Okay that's good, just make sure the panorama is out of the way too as we need to get to this panel. And if you still can't see it, the panel that is, then come up here to the windows menu and select the layers panel from there. Alright here we are, this is what I wanted to show you. The images have been aligned and blended together but are still on separate layers making it possible to go in there and make high level changes to each image individually. And not only are they on their own layers but they've also been chopped and changed using layer masks that if you know how to use them are completely editable. That's amazing considering that by default layer masks aren't even available inside the software. If you want more information regarding masks then feel free to check out my basic masks video that focuses on Photoshop CS4 but they will also give you a really good example of how and why we can use them for Elements users as well. really does improve your knowledge base. Okay I'll stretch the image back over. I just wanted to make you aware of that point. Now we'll crop the image by coming over to the toolbox on the left hand side and activating the crop tool. You can also access it by hitting the C key on the keyboard. Now drag a rectangular area around the panorama just like so and I'll make sure that the top is aligned to the edge of the photograph like so. Best to get things in check right now. Then I'll do the same with the sides of the image. We'll benefit from getting all of the detail of the stadium in that we can. Just like so, that looks good. Now I'll drag the bottom around a little bit until we get something like this. Now if I could take this image again I would undoubtedly stand up and take some more photographs that better capture what's going on in the lower region of this shot. And that's where experience is going to come in handy. The more you do this kind of stuff the better you're going to get next time round. Alright I'll make sure that we're not impeding on any of the transparent areas of the image and I'll use the zoom tool to zoom in a little bit now and again just to make sure that I'm getting all of the crop boundaries into the exact locations that I want them and making sure everything is aligned okay. I'm using control spacebar clicking to zoom on the PC and control alt spacebar clicking to zoom out and on the Mac that's command spacebar clicking to zoom in and command option spacebar clicking to zoom out. Alright I think I'm happy right there. I'll finish the job by hitting the enter key on the PC or the return key on the Mac and that will crop the image just like we have done right here. And there we have it. I'll make sure we're zoomed at the appropriate level to take all of the image in and there's our finished product. The stitching of three separate images into one seamless panorama made easy by a little bit of automation on behalf of the photo merge command right here inside Photoshop Elements. Thanks for joining me here at freephotoshop.com. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you next time.